Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Hey, it's Silver Tone Sunday. No, this is not a new series I'm launching. This is just a one-off because I don't know how many more of these Silver Tone guitars I'll ever get. But this is definitely an interesting one, and I have quite a few stories to share with it. But first, let's go ahead and cover what this thing is. Looking at it, we can tell it's a large arch top type guitar. It's probably vintage and really old. As far as I'm aware, there's no real way to pinpoint when this was made, like the specific year. But after doing a bunch of research, I have found that this is most likely a 644 model arch top which would put it being made between 1958 and 1960. So this guitar belongs to the Silvertone 640 family. And these things sold for about $58 new back in the day. That lineup of guitars consisted of three different models. Each of those models was exactly the same build and construction wise. Some of them just had fancier appointments to them. The models within this family are the 644-49, that's this one, the black one. The 640, which is kind of a cherry burst finish. And then the 642 or 651 model. That one was natural. Now, back in the day, I mean, it seems crazy now, but the black one was the best seller. And natural was the worst seller, believe it or not. And I say that's crazy because these are marketed as a spruce top. So that's great wood right there. And curly maple back and sides. So nowadays, I would think the natural one would be more desirable. So you could see all the beautiful wood grain. But people didn't like fancy flame tops back then, according to all the internet stuff I've read. And that's kind of why the bursts weren't super popular at first as well. I couldn't find any specs as to what the neck is made of. I do know it is steel rod reinforced, but I'm not seeing it anywhere as like a truss rod. So I don't believe you can adjust it. I could be wrong, but I don't see where you could. And this looks like a rosewood fretboard to me. And I guess these are fake mother of pearl, but dang, those look pretty good. This is a three and a half inch body, so it's pretty bulky. And you have kind of a traditional feeling neck. I measured approximately 1.7 inch nut width. And it's got a pretty chunky neck to it, super rounded. Honestly, I think it's this big body that's throwing me off. If this thing was on a Les Paul, it would have to be like a 57 reissue. So maybe it is a very large neck. But this thing has had an interesting life. How on earth did I get this? This is not something I would ever really buy. It's something I can appreciate. But no, I did not buy this guitar. This is actually my cousin's wife's instrument and she got it from her prayer partner at church. Now I'm summarizing here because I don't have the complete story, but the gist of it is the prayer partner knew my cousin and his wife were having a baby. He or she, I don't really remember that part, gifted this guitar to them and said, either make beautiful music for your children on this instrument or sell it to help prepare yourself for your new child. So they kept this guitar around for about six months. They asked me if I could restring it and whatnot. And they just kind of sent me a few photos, asked me if I could identify it. And it's like, yeah, I would love to. That was about eight months ago when I was at a super dry spell as far as reviewing guitars. I didn't have any to do. But then things picked up and I've never caught back up again. So this video has kind of been a long time running. They ended up dropping it off with me. I listed it on Reverb. I'm trying to get the most I can for them because it would really help them out. I'd actually took this to Guitar Center just to see if I'm in the ballpark on the estimates. They offered me 250 bucks for it as is. So that tells me it's probably worth between 350 to 500 in this shape, if that's what they were offering me there. But 
this thing's got issues. They're issues that are fairly easy to address if you're competent. <laughs> oh, not like me. I've been trying to do some crazy stuff with this thing. But the problem with this is the action is just way too high. It is not comfortable. This thing was absolutely filthy. I just cleaned it. I mean, I didn't deep clean it or anything. I just kind of wiped it down, cleaned and oiled the fretboard, made the frets look nice and shiny. I put some new strings on. Now, prior to me putting new strings on, this thing was really comfortable up until about the seventh and ninth fret. You could do like chords up and down the neck until that point but it had a really light gauge of strings on it. So I had this bright idea. All right, let's put acoustic guitar strings on here. I have a whole box full of those that I never use and I really wanted to see the full potential of this guitar. That was kind of a bad move on my part. I have 13 gauge strings on here. I probably should have went with the 11s because it made it even more impossible to play this guitar. The heavier gauge strings naturally made the action a little bit higher and it it's just hard to play in general. This is kind of what I consider a slide guitar at this point. But here's what I think is wrong. I don't believe this is the original bridge and this bridge is just high up in the air. I'm hypothesizing that you can just take this and sand it way down because that part will come off the bridge. And if you lower that, I see no reason why the action would just not all of a sudden become playable. I really think somebody just threw a random bridge on that was way too tall for this guitar. So as far as getting this playable, I think you just need a better setup bridge. I tried sanding it down a little bit, but I just don't have the right tools to do it. And I don't even know if that's right. But other than that, I mean, the structure of this guitar is good. It's heavily worn. At one point in time, somebody added a pickup right here. They kind of cut the pick guard there and you've got residual screw holes left. It looks like maybe they had put an output jack, like drilled it into the top right there because you've got another two screw holes. And I'm not quite sure what's going on under the neck. I'm not sure if that's a crack or something you should be worried about. I went ahead and touched up the paint that was chipping a little bit. So now it looks a little bit nicer. But other than that, I do believe the rest of this guitar is stock from the factory. You've got Klusen Deluxe Tuners. This is very similar to what you'd find on a 50s Les Paul Jr. They're not the best tuners anymore. They're very stiff. You have to kind of fight them just to tune this thing up to pitch. And it looks like you have the original nut yet. You can see the bottom E string has kind of broken off the side of it. It still rests just fine in the saddle right there, but it's good to know. The same things kind of happen to the top E string as well. So these guitars apparently have a good reputation. I had never heard of them before, but hey, now we know they exist and we know a little bit about them. So let's go ahead and hear how this guitar kind of sounds. <laughs>
Now that we know how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. I am selling this guitar as a project. It does need some work to be back to its full potential. You can see you've got tons of scratches and just average wear and tear from playing this thing for many years. I don't know much about the original owner of this. I think they said this was sitting in a closet for the past like 10 years or so, hasn't been used. But you can see you've got some paint wear along the edges. And since my cousin's wife already has another guitar that she'll play, that's kind of why she decided to sell this one. So again, you might want to replace the nut. It's got some chipped off portions, but it does still function right now. The fretboard has some indentations from long fingernails. <laughs> that always makes a guitar look vintage really quickly. The frets in the cowboy chord area, they do show some flattening. So you might want to level recrown, dress them, whatnot, once you get the action sorted out. But as of right now, fret condition does not matter at this point. You've got to work on the action. This thing has got some mad finish checking. I'm not sure if any of these are actually cracks. So definitely take a close look here at everything you're seeing. I don't see anything that's really flexing though at this point in time. This trapeze bridge was kind of interesting. I've never strung one up like this. Once you take the strings off, this actually flips up if you don't know. I guess it kind of makes sense when you look at its design though. So this thing, it, it's got a lot of history to it. At one point in time, again, there was a pickup right here, not original to this guitar. And as we discussed earlier, somebody probably had the output jack installed right there. Back of the neck doesn't appear to ever have been repaired or anything. You've got some residue there. And I'm not sure what happened to the neck right here. It's, there's kind of a stickiness to the finish right here. I'm not sure if it was sat up against something warm or that's just where the guy played a lot and it caused friction. You can see you've got some finish missing along this area right here. But nothing seems loose on this guitar. You'll see some slight lines. Nothing's like just going to break off on you. Very large neck profile on this one. And the neck right here, you can kind of see some glue. I'm not sure if this neck was reset at some point in time or if that's just like the original factory glue showing. I'm, I'm not really sure on that. As far as the neck goes, it appears to be straight. You've just got a little bit of bow to it, but that's kind of how most guitars are set up anyways. Back of the guitar, very similar to the front. You've got things that look like cracks and tons of finish checks. The only thing I think that might actually be a real crack is right here. Um, it doesn't appear to flex when I press on it, so maybe it's been repaired or maybe it's not even a crack at all. This is way out of my specialty. I'm just sharing the condition with you guys. Take a look at the sides here. Again, it's about three and a half inches. Doesn't look like anybody's cut any holes out of this guitar. I had a ES-295 that somebody did that to. But that 295, ooh, I should have kept that guitar. The Scotty Moore guitar. That was an awesome one. But you've got some finish chipped off there. But overall, I really do think this is good bones. It just needs somebody to work on this bridge and I think it'll be a perfectly playable guitar again. So now that you have a better idea of the condition, let's go ahead and view it under blacklight. Yep, it glows. In fact, I believe this is how I initially found out that there's screw holes right here because I did not see those previous to the blacklight test. But nothing really new here. You can see you've got some finish wear in this area. Just, you know, somebody's playing. Looks like maybe a sticker was on it at one point in time there but nothing too crazy. Full disclosure, uh, there was a little bit of finish missing under here. I touched that up with my lacquer pen. Same thing with that area under the neck. I just did that for cosmetic reasons. I didn't want to touch up any of these other small areas because I kind of liked the character it brought to it, but those other ones were kind of eyesores. Take a look around the sides here. 
There is kind of a little split in the binding right here. Again, it's not peeling off or anything, but it looks like you got maybe a light separation here. But everything is looking okay on the sides otherwise. Here's the back. It looks like you got some finish missing right there. And this runs right along where I thought a crack might be. So that very well may be one since the finish is also missing a little bit in that area. But everything else on the back's looking all right. The neck doesn't glow probably because all the finish has been worn off. It's definitely not an even feel. You might consider sanding that a little bit, get rid of some of the stickiness. But the back of the headstock is looking good, as is the face. Unfortunately, I don't have a case for this guitar. Apparently they were available back in the 50s for a $10 upgrade, but that's quite expensive when the guitar itself is 60 bucks. I had a few cases laying around that I thought I could donate to this guitar, but eh, it wouldn't fit in any of them. So we've got this Fender brand gig bag. It's a pretty basic gig bag. It's got some padding to it. It's not perfect, but It'll keep the dust off and keep some scratches from forming. If you think you might be interested in taking this K-built Silvertone Aristocrat 644 Archtop Guitar project on, feel free to check out the reverb listing. I will leave a link in the description. Thank you troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.